Welcome to Snack and a Movie. I have the lovely and very busy Rebecca Gibson <laughs> in the hot seat. And I am so happy because, well, I've had uh, Noam Gonick on and he kind of dropped the ball by making me a cup of tea. So <gasps> wow, you Noam. come prepared. And what did you bring? I, I, we have to get right to the snack. OK, so the snack today is mushroom stuffed mushrooms. And it's a very simple dish. My nine-year-old daughter made most <gasps> of it. And uh, so it's, but it's a hit at parties. Oh my goodness, and what kind of cheese is in there? Cream cheese. Oh, of course. Nothing but the finest Philadelphia cream cheese. <laughs> and speaking of the finest, we're going to get a little incredible nugget from this documentary that you made on Daphne Coral. And uh, you so fondly named the documentary Winnipeg's Drama Queen, but I'm sure <laughs> there's a whole story behind that. Absolutely. Um, Mrs. Coral it, was one of the most influential people in the arts community in Winnipeg. And a lot of people in her later years just saw her as a crazy lady because she was so full of passion and uh, so outspoken. And so when I conceived of the documentary about 15 years ago, um, I always knew it was going to be called Daphne Coral, the drama queen of Winnipeg. <laughs> but there's so much to her story that people didn't know. Yes, and she influenced so many uh, people in the dance community. Yeah. I mean, my background is ballet, of course, and I knew of Daphne, but uh, um, I mean, it's bittersweet, right, in making of this documentary because Daphne unfortunately left us. Yes, but I feel like this film gave her a boost. I feel like she was <laughs> waiting for her movie to get made. That's what she called it, her movie. So when I went to visit her to ask her if we could shoot the yeah. film, um, we'd been commissioned to do it before I got her permission. And I felt pretty confident about it. So I went to visit her in the hospital, and uh, she was lying you know, very still, and I, I said, Mrs. Coral, I'm here to make your movie. And she reached across, and she had an envelope full of her resumes. She <laughs> passed it to me, and she said, here are some of the things I've done. And so, you know, it just, it, she just lit up yeah. about her movie. She called me while we were in the post-production phase of things that took several months. When's my movie coming out? When can I see my movie? And then um, her film premiered just days before her uh, 90th birthday. Mm -hmm. And it was the last public event she attended, and then she passed in January of last year. Oh, so I believe Daphne's spirit is in the room with us. I feel right it. Right now. I feel it. I feel it. So without further ado, let's watch a little bit from Daphne Coral, Winnipeg's Drama Queen. My name is Daphne Coral, and uh, I have a passion for the arts. When I first met Daphne, she walked into the room, and the whole room lit up. And of course, it wasn't for Mrs. Coral. I wouldn't have even made it up to that career. We all know that Daphne Coral is crazy. Crazy about acting, crazy about dancing, crazy about Winnipeg artists and crazy about the health and success of Winnipeg's artistic community. She just has this way when she walks in a room to just take your breath away. She lived it and she breathed it. She just embodied everything she did. I had some beautiful costumes, gorgeous. Daphne Coral was born in Winnipeg on August 24, 1924, the only child of Bertrand Stanley Harris and Emma Tupper. Daphne's great-grandfather, Sir Charles Tupper, was a father of Confederation and the sixth Prime Minister of Canada. Her grandfather, William Johnston Tupper, was the 12th Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba. Daphne spent much of her childhood in Argentina, where her father worked on the family's fruit plantation. It was in Argentina that Daphne became ballerina. I was there for 12 years and I got beautiful training from Russian teachers. They're the best teachers for ballet, the Russians, because they're the real swans. After a successful career as a ballerina in Argentina with the De Basel Ballet Russe at the Teatro Colón Opera House, Daphne returned to Winnipeg in 1948. When I was in South America, I lived in a boarding house 
when I came to Canada, I lived at government house. So I was, I was from the bottom right up to the top. In 1952, Daphne joined the Winnipeg Ballet, which would later become the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. She soon began to explore modern dance and acting. I was a born dancer, but I learned to act, and I studied stage work. I, I was one of the first people that John Hirsch used. I met Daphne first in 1972, when I was in this production at the Art Gallery of No Exit by Sartre. Um, and I mainly knew her through the theater. It was at that time I realized that she was also a dancer. And she'd done a lot of, you know, early, so-called early, I guess, um, Rainbow Stage and the Manitoba Theater Center and, and so on. And she did a, some theater after in the 70s and through the 80s, including into doing the Fringe. I was uh, in my 30s. And then I met Ted. And then I fell in love with Ted. And we married. Oh, Rebecca, so many memories come back when I see <laughs> Mrs. Coral. And uh, I guess, what did you learn personally when you make, you know, when you make a documentary, yes, you're involved and you're engaged in that person, but you must find something that you never thought of before. Oh my goodness, Mrs. Carl had so many gems that didn't make it into the film um, <laughs> that I didn't know about her. And then there's always the famous stories that she's told so many times. And so to really connect with her story and let her tell the stories about her life that were the most important to her. I think that that's what I learned more than anything was uh, what was important for her to be her legacy. And so much of it was about her relationship with her husband mm -hmm. and how much she advocated for him and putting him in the spotlight. Sometimes she took a step back from the spotlight herself. Really? And that's how she operated with so many of the people that she mentored. She's mentored hundreds of people. And of those people she's mentored, so many have gone on to mentor other people. That's the main thing that I learned from her, mm -hmm. is the mentorship that she gave to me I've paid forward throughout my career. Wow, and well, you have, girl, because, well, <laughs> you know, you're head of Reds Arena, which is an incredible uh, company, strongly made of women that have done so many things, and locally, Danishka Esther Hazy, you said now is in San Francisco, Ashley Hurd is traveling all over the world, and you are doing a TV series, you're directing, you're acting. Is there anything else that I've left off the list right now? Writing and producing. Oh. So those okay. are the four things that occupy my days, writing, directing, acting, producing, and then also being a mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I, I think you deserve a wonderful stuffed mushroom, but oh. before we leave though, <laughs> Now, you realize that we just saw a small segment of Daphne Coral, the Winnipeg's drama queen, but Rebecca, where can people see the entire 29-minute incredible documentary? <laughs> if you want to watch Daphne Coral, the drama queen of Winnipeg, you can find it on VHX.com, which is like VHS tapes, but it's VHX, and it's available there for rent or for purchase. Oh, and it's a wonderful platform for filmmakers, right? Because you just want to get your works out and be seen. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, once again, thank you so much, Rebecca. We love you. Filmmaker extraordinaire, mom extraordinaire, and, <laughs> and wife, too. We have to give kudos to the husband. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, no <laughs> doubt. We are going to now have our snack, and we'll see you next time right here on Snack and a Movie. After the break, SC Mira performs in the loft sessions, and later, a brand new series, Reading and Writing.